Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Great to have you here. My name is Amit Sarada, running the Spotlight Series once again. And today we have Joel Makadar, who runs several businesses and who's been in business for over 10 years. I've had a chance to speak to him earlier on, some fascinating stories and learning he's going to share with us today. And um, we'll kick off by hearing about one of his businesses. But uh, let's start with, so Joel, um, why don't you start by telling us about the businesses you run and um, how long you've been running them for? So the first business I run is called Continuous Sports. Um, it's a football agency, mainly a boutique football agency. Uh, we do, um, so I'm personally a football agent um, and I do on-pitch uh, contracts and off-pitch commercial opportunities with some players in the Premier League, some pe- some players elsewhere. And the second business I run is called Eight Original and it's an award-winning social media agency. So try to combine those as much as possible, um, but independently they're uh, successful in their own right, thank God to marketing business football agency business i mean come on which one's going to be your most favorite business to be running from those two well i mean honestly they're miles different one of them is very much self-motivation all the time um you have to be out there you have to show your face all the time the other one is a little bit more like a kind of a standard business so the Mm -hmm. the marketing agency um where you know you have a team of x amount of staff i have three employees um so it works a little bit more like a team. The other one is very mm-hmm. much um, get up and go sort of. Um, yeah. So it's uh, they're completely entirely different, entirely different. Yeah, I can imagine they're completely different. So when did the, um, the inspirational motivation start from to have, first of all, two businesses, but let alone two businesses, two businesses of a completely different nature? I mean, where does that all come from? To be completely honest with you, I, I didn't never really planned on having two businesses. Uh, I always wanted to have one. <laughs> I think most people say that that's their main ambition if they want to be a business owner. Um, for me, the first business, which was the football, which is a football agency, I founded about ten years ago. Um, that's how long I've been a football agent for. Um, mm. it's something I've always wanted to do. But since I was sixteen, I realized I wasn't going to be good at football. Um, that particular business takes quite a long time to get into. Um, you know, you typically have to start with your smaller contracts, which means smaller amounts of money, etc. And if you want to make it as an independent agent, then it does take a while for kind of for it to financially be able to take off in any sort of way. Um, so that one is has sort of been going for for a very long time, like you said, a decade. Um, the other business was actually just an opportunity that I sort of thought was there from my own kind of social media experience um i had a part-time job in digital marketing ages ago um then i sort of realized that actually something that was being delivered to me which was kind of social media content that everybody else was being delivered as well i guess um Mm -hmm. it wasn't particularly working for me i couldn't really relate to most of it um it was all very professional so i kind of um i sort of decided to go on my own and start creating some relatable content um and yeah and you know one thing led to another and almost five years later now i've got a lovely team and an office in london so um it's going really well thank god but yeah it's it the ambition i'm it it came from two completely different places um Mm -hmm. i've done a few things where i kind of combine the digital marketing end of things with some of the footballers that i work with um yeah but i tend to not typically it tends to to kind of stay apart from each other it's an interesting one because um like you said you two different businesses and one led to the other one because you couldn't find a, your need being satisfied by an existing digital marketing agency so you thought you know what let me go and create my own that does it the way you want it to be done and now you've got two separate beasts yeah. running together yeah. um and running your own business is a challenge itself and you got two so um tell me out of the have you had a chance to meet any celebrity footballers along the way or come across them, you know, within, within meters, like premiership footballers, championship footballers along your journey? Yeah, no, yeah, that's um, that's something that I do do on a weekly basis. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in the business for a long time, so it's allowed me to be in certain rooms within certain circles that does involve mm. um, big footballers that people would know. Um, I tend to not really show that much or tell that much um it's just kind of who i am and i think a lot of uh players that i work with appreciate that side of me um yeah it's all really exciting at the end of the day you end up 
I mean, you, as always, you know, everybody's a human being. So you end up treating them just like that with the respect that you would treat anybody else. So um, I'm less of a fanboy this day, these days, but because I have to be, um, sometimes I do kind of um, get carried away. Like everybody in football is a, uh, it's an emotional game. Um, mm-hmm. But generally speaking, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is something that I'm lucky to do, um, but it is, it is hard work. Don't get me wrong. I can imagine plenty of hard work, but you are living the dream from that respect. Um, so you're clearly surrounded by plenty of successful people. I mean, uh, when I say the word success, what role model or character comes to your mind first? That's really interesting you asked me that. I've been asked that before, and it's something that actually I think changes over time for me. Um, I think not only in your business journey, whether it's right when you start, when you think, you know, this idea could be a billion pound idea or this deal could make my life or whatever, to growing up, maturing, I'm now married, I now have a child, I now see happiness and success as something completely mm-hmm. different. Um, so, you know, it started being, you know, for me, I don't know, I, I, I really, I loved Pele growing up, for example. I just thought he was you know, class personified, obviously was mm. in this messy football game that we all like. Um, and he and he's always been class personified. And I really, really admire that. It didn't really go deeper than that. Um, now again, you know, owning a business, I look at, you know, your Stephen Bartlett's of the world, your sort of younger entrepreneurs that have that I have been able to to kind of quote unquote crack it. But even somebody like Stephen Bartlett himself talks about what he deems as happiness, what he deems as success. Um, so in that respect, I can't really give you a couple of names, unfortunately, but I, I do have to say that they do sort of change on a week-to-week basis. Um, mm-hmm. I do tend to read a lot about fellow entrepreneurs and um, you know people like Gary Vee that talk about do what makes you happy and things like that. Um, yeah. I do tend to listen to them a lot. So it does kind of it does change. And I think Just, most it does change. Are, and the, and I think most people that have been that have started to be entrepreneurs from a from a relatively young age comparatively mm. um would kind of understand what I mean. I think eventually it'll settle and I'll say, like, oh, do you know what? Like this, you know, this person seems to be completely relatable to me. Like this is this is the one. Um yeah. but I haven't particularly got to that moment, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm good that one moment. Okay. I mean, like you said, success is something the definition of success can change over time. And so your role model, whoever it is can change because different ones are going to have different influences on you over time. Um, but at the moment, uh, when you look back to when you were, say, coming out of university or when coming out of education, has the future turned out to be what you thought it was going to be? Or is it something completely different? Uh, it's something entirely different. Um, something entirely different. I've always been somebody who's wanted to be an entrepreneur um uh you know i've done you know the prince's trust enter- uh, enterprise um course i you know i've won money to to make my own businesses before i've been some i i am somebody that has always wanted to do this but the realities difficulties challenges um m- great moments of owning a business um you can you don't know what they're like naturally mm. um so i think no but it's still amazing. That's the answer. I don't really, um, I, you know, I think you asked me before the conversation as well. Um, you know, how, how, like, you know, you own two businesses, sort of how, how did you get to both of them? And the reality is that I wasn't trying to own necessarily two businesses. I was trying to do one and there was an opportunity to do the other one. And I thought, well, yeah. no one else is going to do it. Then why not me? And it ended up being something entirely successful that I've made work. Um, so, has the future turned out the way I thought it would? No, but is it absolutely amazing? Absolutely. Um, I've got, Love it. you know, yeah, professionally and personally as well. So. Love it. Love the way you, um, you've just kind of taken in your stride and just accepted it and run with the um, ride of the wave as you were there. Yeah. So when we spoke about some great moments and achievements, you spoke, you touched on challenges and we'll mm-hmm. go into a bit of those in a second. Um, but what I'd like to ask you is, um, are you a goal setter? Uh no, I'm more of a manifester. Um, I I don't know if manifester is a word, by the way. Somebody who manifests. It is now. 
Um, I didn't really know about the concept of manifestation as a as a definition. Hmm. Um, I kind of I've always had a vision for things past a certain point in my life. I think a lot of people that start businesses a lot of time are a little bit short sighted. Um, I saw that growing up um, with different people who were in business who were, um, you know, close to me. So I've always been somebody that thinks, okay, short sighted in a short sighted way, it works out what happens in the medium and the long term, what does this turn into? Do I see a vision past whatever that short sightedness is? Um, and I it it seems for now that I have been able to make that vision work in some way or another. That hasn't been via setting tangible goals yet. Say that saying that, um, I have started to do that now. Um, I think when I was in business on my own, when I was you know I had companies but I didn't have employees or anything it was something where you know if something would go wrong it's about me if something goes right it's about me you know when you've got a team when you got people working for you um, it has to go a little bit beyond that so not only me but also I've got my team setting goals for themselves I've got my team setting goals for our clients um, that way everybody can be a ha- a held accountable to a certain standard mm. um, I think that's a, I've, I've grown to know that that's a healthy way to do things even when you're doing things by yourself um, yeah. but when you're doing things by yourself and you set a goal, you also need to be the kind of cold blooded person to understand that what you unfortunately don't get to those goals. Perhaps you were a little bit too ambitious, but it's not a bad thing that you didn't get there. And I think initially in business, that's something that I was a little bit apprehensive about, um, to not say scared, um, you know, setting a goal, like, how do I know this goal is achievable? How do I know, you know, I've got you start getting a little bit imposter syndrome esque. You know how how mm. how do I know that this is even gonna work? Like why don't I just do it? And you know, it, I ended up kind of doing things, and they end up working out. The reality is, is that it doesn't for a lot of people. And if I was to do it again, I would probably give myself certain goals, and that's what I do now. So, um, am I a goal setter now? Yes. Was I? Absolutely not. Well, as you know. And as you said, business is kind of a journey, learn, you learn as you go along. Um, you touched on the word challenges and greatest moments. I mean, could you share maybe one of your greatest moments and then maybe share some of the biggest challenges you face? And maybe we talk about challenges. If you if you like to, please, can you kind of focus on internal challenges rather than the economy is this or the political situation is that? Kind of internal yeah. business challenges you'd be happy to share with the business community. But first of all, how about mm-hmm. one of your greatest moments in business? I actually think one of my greatest moments in business happened about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think we, like, like I touched on, we won, we won an award from a marketing agency. And I think Congratulations. in a lot of, and thank you. And a lot of businesses, you, you know, you can you ask, sorry, the over there, what was the award for? And, and uh, yeah, what was the award for? What are you known for right now that the award is given? Right. So the award was for um, paid social media campaign of the year. So we took over the launch, the pre-launch and the launch of a documentary um, last February, March-ish. Uh, it wasn't an Netflix one or anything. It was, it was quite small, actually. But we had a, our KPI, our objective, our goal, like you mentioned, was, a, was quite ambitious. Uh, and we ended up reaching it. We ended up reaching it on a low budget. So we thought that was particularly um, award-worthy. Um, um so we applied and we won um so we're yeah that's we're we're, we're award winning which is great for people listening um, that have um channels or programs that they want to launch online mm-hmm. you could be certainly someone that's got the experience to help channels or documentaries launch online and get that kind of traction is that correct yes exactly so i mean if for example what we did was um sort of um, brief the pieces of content that we needed in order to to put out on you know Instagram, TikTok, etc. In order to get people mm-hmm. excited about the movie, um, and then what we did was we executed a paid campaign, which we we basically said, right, cool, we want to target this these kinds of people, and these are the sort of people that we sent the content to. But the cool thing about it was that it was international; it wasn't just the UK. So we reached people in the US, we reached people in you know places like Italy, Morocco um friends with with obviously english content um 
So it was really, really, really good. Uh, it went really well. Uh, we got millions of views on our videos, um, like actionable views. So it went really well. So we won a UK Digital Excellence Award, um, which was two weeks ago. Um, and I think it was it was one of my it is one of my greatest achievement to date. It's not financial or anything like that. You don't get anything for winning an award, only that little trophy. Mm. Um, but to be honest, in a lot of businesses, you beat your competition, beat your competition by sort of winning over a client or keeping a client or I don't know, potentially going yeah. public before another company at a really high level. Um, with award ceremonies for marketing specifically, you're competing against your competitors, your peers in a very kind of straightforward way. Uh, and for me to have created something that can now beat other people who have potentially more experience than us, more experience than me, um, is uh, is quite is it's very cool, man. Like it's really, right, it really definitely really does sound um. Yeah, that's sounds exciting. I'm just okay. we're just running out of time, and I want to squeeze in three quick questions because I know you can share some valuable insights on all three of them. First of all, you mentioned the word team, and you got us a, a team of people. Um, what advice would you give to business owners who have got team members in order to get the best out of these team members? Um, I think nurture their talent. Uh, a lot of people put out job descriptions and then accept and then expect, you know, the person to only follow the job description, and that's it. Uh, mm. And I think people have talent that can be nurtured. People have talents that can be nurtured past the job descriptions. And I think as a manager, as a business owner, you have to be a business owner. You have to be able to see that. Typically, Brilliant. if the ta talent can be nurtured towards you know where your vision for the company is, that's better. Um, but yeah, I feel like noticing that is something key that I would, um, I would say. Fantastic. Um, secondly. Casting your mind back to when you were, say, 18 or 20 years old, what advice would you give to yourself when you were 18 or 20 years old? Or what advice would you give to a budding entrepreneur at the age at this time as well? Um, I would I would genuinely say go for it. Mm -hmm. I would say trust your gut feeling because it's generally right. Um, you should take a couple of people who you value and listen to their opinion. But other than that, um, you know, too many opinions can can hinder you making certain decisions so i would genuinely say go for it but i would also say make sure that you're equipped with some business knowledge so when certain things do hit you certain challenges hit you such as you know you're managing an amount of money that you've never managed before you need to know how to do that um you that that is an actual skill or you need to be able to outsource it i.e yeah. know who to outsource it to to be able to make those decisions so those two things I think are are key for me. Um, yeah, maybe so common sense. Of what Henry Ford bangs or banged on about is that he doesn't need to know the answers to everything, but he's got to have people that know the answers to everything. So if numbers mm -hmm. isn't quite our thing or your thing or their thing, who can do it better for them so that they don't have to worry too much about it? So that's a great bit of insight there. And finally, at the moment, when you took when you look introspectively, and all business owners have this, what would be your three biggest challenges or three things that keep keep you up at night in relation to say your business okay nothing keeps me up at night thank god uh per se um the three things that i that i do kind of think about constantly is growth um scaling if you would um i've been able to scale to a certain extent and you know there comes a time in a business where you need to really go for the scale and mm. for that you need to have the again you need to have the knowledge you need to understand how to do it and how to do it sustainably there's a lot of businesses that lose a lot of money when they do that and they can never yeah. come back so that's something that gets me because otherwise as a business owner you kind of stay, stay where you are and if you stay stay where you are you're dead so um that's 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 the that's if i was to say one thing it would be that and then the other thing is my um my team um mm like they keep me up at night for a good reason but at the end of the day i always think you know if i was them like i would want somebody to constantly push me to kind of cut to push me up that is yeah and as i push them up it means that i need to bring people under them don't i and if i bring people under them that means there needs to be more business into the into the, the company and it goes back to the first bit so um i think those two three things i would say makes sense so it's all related to growth. We want to grow, we want to scale, 
um, and you can do it sustainably because sometimes too fast can obviously lead to a bit of a collapse. And your team, your team is something you think about all the time. You would promote them, help them grow, grow up the go up the ladder of their own career. But if they're growing, going up the ladder, you need somebody to back for their space. But of course, you'd only do that if you're growing and scaling. It's all kind of intertwined. And um, in business, most things are intertwined, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. You're right. I've I've learned to to know that very well. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, Joel, I've got a whole page full of notes over here as you've been talking. Um, it's been absolutely insightful. Uh, you're juggling two businesses, which is amazing. And um, I think there's very little for me to say except for thank you for your time. Good luck for the rest of the future. And um, I'm sure you'll keep smashing it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.